Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Silver has fallen to oversold territory. And that means, in my opinion, that there's a lot of silver being sold. Not necessarily in the physical, although there is that too. But mostly in the electronic, in the paper markets. Let's explore. Yes, and I think this is the key reason why silver is more volatile than gold. You have so much of it trading in these uh, exchange-traded funds and electronic markets and the like. And, um, you know, there's you have to wonder how much of it is being floated around there and traded out there and testing uh, compared to the actual number of physical ounces. And this is where many of us feel uh, where you're going to see some of that manipulation, natural manipulation, uh, because you know these things are happening and being sold by people who are not, aren't necessarily nefarious in their motive, but they're just grabbing a bunch of this stuff and selling it to try to make money off of it. You know, this is one way to quote invest in silver, I guess. Um, but generally, even those who do hold it in electronic format, um, those people are probably doing what we're doing in the physical. They're hold, holding it as sort of a hedge against some of their other holdings. <clears throat> but this is uh, by Andrew Height, and uh, this is from Seeking Alpha. The price of silver hit a high in early September when the precious metal traded to a peak of $19.54 on the continuous futures contract and $19.75 on December futures. Since then, the price of silver corrected. Last week, silver fell to another new short-term low of $16.61 to 62 cents per ounce. So far in 2019, silver is traded in a range between $14.25 and $19.54 on the nearby COMEX futures contract. You know, that is something that is quite a wide range that we've seen uh, this year between the two different price points. At around $16.90, at the end of last week, the price of the metal was at the midpoint of the year. Silver experienced a 50% retracement uh, of the move high, higher during the current price correction. Uh, so on the short-term chart, silver's declined into oversold territory. That means people can just unload these paper contracts very quickly and easily, very highly liquid. Um, uh, for sure, with silver trading under $17 per ounce, the odds that the precious metal is near a short-term bottom <clears throat> are rising. So in other words, the author here believes that um, we're nearing a, a bottom for silver, and um, but for the short term, it could be <clears throat> kind of stagnant, probably, is my guess. The most direct route for risk or investment position uh, in the silver market is via the physical bars and coins available through dealers around the world. And that is uh, what I'm encouraging people to do as well, too, to hold the physical as well. They may not be quite as liquid as the, as the ETFs out there on the futures, but nonetheless, uh, the COMEX division of the CME provides highly liquid futures and futures option contracts on the precious metal. For those who do not wish to hold actual silver, venture into the futures arena. The Velocity shares 3x long silver ETN uh, product USLV and its bearish counterpart DSLV allow market participants to take leveraged risk positions in the silver market via standard equity accounts. And it talks about here how silver is more volatile than gold. And I think that's part of the reason you see a lot of this trading. Now, there are gold futures as well, too. But typically, I think people who, uh, who buy gold... Um, they can afford to do so in any mass quantities of it. Might as well buy the physical form because you get a lot of wealth packed in a small space. Silver often moves far more than gold on a percentage basis. The monthly chart highlights the monthly historical volatil volatility in the gold futures market stood at 14.13% at the end of last week. So the monthly price variance metric stood at 22.29 in the silver futures market. Silver offers investors and speculators more opportunity than gold when it comes to short, medium, and long-term risk positions on the long and short side of the market. In other words, you're talking about futures, electronic trading. This is where silver can potentially be seen as a potential investment. 
um, because it is riskier to do it in that way. So in, there, in that case, you can look at it as an investment. I steer away from that because I hold the physical, these physical pieces, silver, you hold in your hand. I believe it's best to hold it for a long term because even if the price doesn't move at all, you're going to lose money when you try to sell it because you're not going to get those premiums back. And more than likely, places will give you uh, at the very most spot price and more than likely less than spot price for it. Uh, whereas in the electronic markets, well, I think there's a, a nominal fee to trade. I'm not sure. I've never dabbled in that area. In 2019, in the month of June, gold broke out above its technical resistance level at the July 2016 post-Brexit post high of 1377.50 uh, per ounce. The monthly chart shows that the price of the yellow metal rose to its highest price since 2013 when it traded uh, to $1,559.80 in early September. Gold moved from its low for this year uh, at 1266 to the September peak, or 23.2%. Meanwhile, silver never challenged its July 2016 peak at $21.09 per ounce. However, the nearby silver futures market moved from its 2019 low at 1424 to a peak in 1954, or 37.2% over the same period when gold took off to the upside. While silver did not experience the same technical breakout as gold, it still delivered a more substantial percentage gain over that period. That's the thing. That's the volatility. And this is where you can utilize silver as an investment if you're in that world. But you really have to be in the electronic world to really take advantage of that price swing because holding physical you're not going to get those kind of returns. And uh, I don't know many people in this community. I know several that do trade um, ETFs um, or futures, but not many. During the most recent correction from the high, gold fell to a low of $1,446.20 on November 12th, a decline of 7.3% from the high. At the same time, silver fell to a low at $16.62 uh, the same day, or 15% above it's early September peak. And the author goes on to say, gives them some hope for silver, that it looks bullish on the long-term chart. The midpoint of the silver futures market so far in 2019 stands at $16.89 per ounce. The price was marginally above the le that level at the end of last week. Meanwhile, the long price picture for silver market continues to look constructive at just below the $17 per ounce uh, level. The quarterly chart here, and this is the uh, the chart they're kind of looking at here. And again, you're kind of getting uh, some technical analysis here, which I'd, I tend to shy away from. But uh, they're looking and saying that, and I think that's a very uh, conservative call, by the way, to say that you just under $17 an ounce. Um, uh, we shall see. I believe it'll probably go higher than that in due course, probably into next year. Um, but... Um, Expect a wide trading range in the silver futures arena. So if we see more money pouring into the into the electronic markets, those are the markets to kind of watch and see because that's going to drive the demand for the electronic uh, paper contracts out there. I think uh, will probably uh, potentially drive the market up because silver, the whole market cap for silver is, is incredibly low. But why is that? Well, naturally, because the price is low. There's not as much interest in it. Uh, silver followed gold to the upside from, upside from June through September, even though it did not break out from a long-term technical perspective. It continued to display a wider price variance than the gold market. Silver will be watching the yellow metal over the coming weeks and months. If gold moves to a higher high and challenges a $1,600 level, expect silver to also move to a new high. The critical technical level for the silver market on the upside stands at the July 2016 high at just over $21 per ounce, that's the level to, to, to break, to beat. A break above that level could send a herd of buyers into the silver market. I actually agree with that. Uh, in 1980, silver hit its all-time peak at over $50 per ounce. Of course, adjusted for inflation, I think that's close to 200 bucks an ounce. In 2011, the price fell just short of that level when it rose to $49.82. Now, keep in mind, those were for very short periods of time in both cases. The trend in global interest rates continues to favor precious metals. The U.S. Fed is likely to cut rates further this year. Uh, actually, I don't think that's going to happen now. 
Uh, I think that Chairman Powell has pretty much made it clear that um, they're done cutting for this year. Chairman Powell indicated that a rise in the Fed fund rate is not on the horizon. Um, and uh, a negative 50 basis points in Europe, the deposit rate is at its lowest level in history. Precious metals compete with other assets. When rates are rising, fixed income securities become more attractive. In a falling rate environment, precious metals tend to shine. At the same time, there are more than a few issues facing the world that will continue to ignite periods of fear and uncertainty. Gold and silver both tend to benefit when the market participants seek shelter and assets that typically hold their value. And, of course, and goes on to talk about more along the lines. And I think this guy is an is a trader in the in these markets, but um, for the S S L V and for the for the paper and future contracts. Not me. I don't dabble in that world. Um, but I'm risk averse. And for those of you who are not, well, you can utilize. I think the only way really to trade the metal of in and of itself uh, as an investment, by the way, is in the electronic markets. They're highly liquid, and uh, you are dealing with um, very low fees for trades, and you take advantage of price movements and can liquidate and buy in an instant. I think that is how you do it. I think that's the best way to really consider it. I guess you can try it in the physical, but if you are aiming to make money on silver, uh, in other words, treat it as an investment, you're going to have a hard road ahead of you, especially in the physical market. Uh but uh, I think in the electronic market, I guess it is possible for those who are savvy enough in that arena. Not me. I'm very risk averse for sure. And I kind of like the physical. I kind of like holding the coin, you know, and playing with it, flipping it. You know, let's see here. Hearing the sound of the metal against other silver coins here. Something about that sound. Just bring this out here. That that does something, you know. It's it's you're not going to get that from an elect from an exchange traded fund. You're not going to get that from any other type of silver out there other than the physical form. So there you go. All right. Well, interesting indeed. I kind of agree with this. I think it is, you know, being oversold, and that's what happens. But I stand by my previous uh, video that I talked about this that. The only way we're going to see the prices uh, stay up is if we see a, an increased demand in the physical. Because if we do see that, then that's less of it that is being traced or backed by anything, even if they, even if most people believe that it's hard, you, you're not going to be able to test those uh, silver futures or, or ETFs against the physical. Uh, the more the physical that's out of the stream and the flow of of um, the industrial usage size as a commodity, the more of it that's in our hands instead of in their hands. And by their, I'm meaning for the use in the biomedical fields and technology. Increased demand for bullion, for coins, bars, the investment side as far as the physical form. The more that there is of that out of that arena, I think we're going to see the price go up and stay up. And how far up and to... Uh, it will go. Um, I believe we could see close to that $20, $21, but it's going to take a lot because I think a lot of it is just in the past that have been that have been sold back into the um, for recycling and the like and and all that and where it's being utilized in a commodity. That silver is, um, you know, it's not being retained back into the people who I think will really move move the price, and that's those of us who accumulate the physical. It's going to take. We need a lot more people buying silver uh, in the end in order for it to go up. And what's going to be the catalyst of that? Well, usually what happens is people uh, make the decisions based off fear. That's right, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Fud. That's right. So the economy's got to fudge up before FUD can take into effect. Therefore, people buying silver. So what are your thoughts below um, about silver falling to this oversold territory and uh, how silver can be used in as, as an investment? And uh, I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to all of you for taking the time to watch this video.
and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.